Deciding what to do with your biomes can be complicated. With my plaza's town square complete and my dream garden established in the peaceful meadow, I now turn my sights towards Dazzle Beach. Though, as usual, I wasn't quite sure where to start. Growing up on the coast myself, I knew I wanted the shores of Dazzle Beach to capture the beauty and magic of an ocean biome. After experimenting with various paths and furniture placement, I began to lean more towards a beach teeming with life and vegetation. Hey there, gamers, I'm Probably Senpai, and today we will be exploring my Dazzle Beach build. I'd like to open this video by stating there is no right or wrong way to decorate your valley. What's important is that you create something that feels right to you. I'd also like to mention that I am a small, full-time content creator, so taking the time to press that like button can make a huge difference in my life. If you enjoy today's video, please consider subscribing to catch more Dreamlight Valley content. And with that, let's get started. We start today's tour from the central garden path that leads into Dazzle Beach. One of the first things you'll notice is Ariel's Palace, which I've placed offshore for a couple of reasons. First, I was quick to notice that the sand surrounding Ariel's castle happens to be a completely different shade than the sand found on the shores of Dazzle Beach. Because of this, I believe her home looks more natural as an island. Secondly, I prefer her home at a distance when approaching Dazzle Beach, as it makes the shore feel less cramped. Ariel's Palace is one of the most beautiful homes in the valley. Having it positioned offshore allows us to take in that beauty as we approach. Currently, Ariel is one of the four villagers residing on my beach. We'll get to the others later in the tour. Upon entering the beach, you'll notice that the pathing in this biome is quite different from the pathing I've used in the others. No matter what traditional pathing I tried placing, I just couldn't get it to feel right for this particular build. So instead of using gold and opal road, or the standard brick, I chose to use various small stone clusters. Though this does come with some pros and some cons. The pro of using these stones is that you can save resources and star coins, as items from the landscaping menu do not require either of those. The con in this situation is of course the item limit. Placing this many stone clusters requires an incredibly high budget and has led to Dazzle Beach being one of my most expensive biomes. Whereas traditional pathing and fencing do not count towards the 3000 item limit whatsoever. So I usually tend to use them quite heavily in other biomes that I've developed. Though I felt it necessary to take a different route for Dazzle Beach. In addition to the stone cluster pathing, you'll also notice loads of vegetation. I wanted to completely transform Dazzle Beach into a lush shoreline teeming with life. Most of the vegetation you see, such as the grass, palm trees, tropical ferns, and others, are from the landscaping menu. The less conventional foliage you're bound to have noticed is the bioluminescent foliage from the Moana collection. The bioluminescent palm, small and medium coral ferns, and the beadlet anemone can all be found in Scrooge's shop, along with a few other featured items. A few furniture items from the Little Mermaid collection fit the beach's theme well, such as the Coral Reef Lounge and the Coral Hanger, which both happen to output a bioluminescent glow themselves. The Coral Reef Lounge puts off a dim pink light, while the Coral Hanger houses a soft golden glow. To the right of the first resting bench, you'll notice a beach banquet accompanied by a handful of tiki torches. This brings us to the topic of lighting. Aside from the bioluminescent plants, the shoreline is primarily lit with just two styles of torches. One, the craftable blue light low beach torches, and two, the purchasable tall torch. The blue light low beach torches rest alongside the shoreline where the tide rolls in, while the warm lighting of the tall torches guides us along the main path. Following the main path into Dazzle Beach, we come across the small log bridge. Arching palm trees welcome us into this new space as we head towards Moana's home. Moana's home is paired with her fishing boat, and the area it occupies serves as a small marketplace for the biome. Goofy's stall, the log fishing pier, some on-site storage, and Donald's ship 
round out the marketplace along with a few small decorations. Offshore, behind Moana's home, lies a small island ripe with vegetation. This island houses the ruins of an ancient temple, and at its very center lies an incomplete quest pillar. Considering the pillars are not movable until completed, I decided to play to this pillar's strength while developing this location. I wanted the pillar to rest in a place of ancient magic, so I placed several temple ruins, thorny pillars, and ample vegetation to give it a long forgotten feel. It seems fitting sitting next to Skull Rock, which I'm guessing will be tied to this quest pillar in the future. On the topic of Skull Rock, Maui's home is currently paired with the location. I wanted Maui's home close to Moana's, and I found that his home was aesthetically similar to Skull Rock, allowing his house to blend in with the offshore scenery. Continuing further along the stony path, we head past Moana's home and onto the far side of Dazzle Beach. While the outer edges of the stone path are still accompanied by thick vegetation, the shoreline on this part of the biome is mostly open, aside from a few lights, lounging areas, and the home of our beloved Stitch. I decided to keep this part of the shore mostly open to be used as a public beach access. Now we're going to explore one of my favorite features in all of Dazzle Beach, and perhaps in all of the valley. When deciding what to do with the grassy patch of Dazzle Beach, I was a bit lost. Upon exploring Dazzle Beach for the first time, the grassy nook felt like an ancient and sacred place housing magic and mystery. I was determined to play with that concept, so I decided this would be the location for the biome's wishing well. I surrounded the grassy nook with a dense wall of vegetation with the exception of an entryway. Staying true to the Dazzle Beach theme, I utilized the Coral Hanger to light the path inward and placed two statues in honor of the biome's local demigod. To give the location a sense of ancient magic, I added all of the completed quest pillars from throughout the valley and placed two celestial wells on both sides of the wishing well. I wanted this location to feel like an overgrown temple so I used the thorny pillars to line the perimeter and laid sinister brick as the foundation, much like we saw on the small deserted island. The sense of magic I feel when traveling to this well fills me with a sense of pride whenever I arrive to the biome. Overall, my favorite feature of this Dazzle Beach build would have to be the Moana Collection. The bioluminescent foliage from the Moana Collection gives the beach a truly magical feel. Now that we've explored all the features of this Dazzle Beach build, we'll close out this video with a silent walkthrough of the entire biome. But first, a few closing statements. I would love to hear your favorite part of this Dazzle Beach build in the comments below. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you enjoyed today's video. Thank you for checking out my valley. If you'd like to share your valley, you can do so by joining our Discord and visiting our Dreamlight Valley section. If you have any questions for me, you can catch me live on Twitch and Facebook Gaming. I'll put the link below the video. Again, thank you so much for your time and attention today, and good luck decorating your valley.